What is a perfect helmet for a tournament or a duel to the death? Let's talk about the safest and the most comfortable knight helmets. In the course of the late Middle Ages and the early modern period, numerous helmets were made for war and tournaments. Basically, a knight always had to decide whether to choose open or closed helmets. In battle, it's important to able to breathe well, to see as much as possible and to hear well. Therefore, many knights choose to wear open helmets or open their visors in battle. In tournaments, however, the majority of knights wore helmets that were as secure as possible. Especially when we want to simulate the fight of knights today, it is important to protect ourselves as best as possible. With open visors or gaps in the armor and padding, we have to keep a low profile and acquire flaws in the fighting style and practice of historical techniques. So what is a perfect helmet for a harness fencer, the knight in a tournament? The majority of harness fences use the so-called Schaller. The Schaller were very popular in late Middle Ages because they represent a compromise between a safe and comfortable helmet. The head stays movable even though the neck area is protected by a sturdy collar. In tournaments, however, the helmet is still rarer than the general prevalence of the Schala on battlefields would suggest. Reasons for these are the wiser slides. Due to the shape, depth reach the eyes more quickly than with other wisers. Also, the mouth and nose area is more often not securely closed. If the upper part of the helmet is only attached to the head, the force of blows is directed to the spine and injuries are more frequent than with other helmets. Several tests have shown me that shallows are too unsafe for hard harness fencing. The fewer holes a helmet has the less likely it is that wood splitters from the lenses can get into the holes of the helmet. Therefore, many tournament helmets only had single sides air holes on the side facing away from the opponent. However, in foot tournaments with spears and swords, the risk was lower and both more and larger holes for air and safety were placed on the helmets. The more closed a helmet, the safer it is. While the throat of a great helmet was only protected by a chain collar of the basquinet under the great helmet, the great basquinet have a stable plate collar. The great basquinet is one of the safest helmets of the late Middle Ages, but the helmet anchors the wearer's head to his breastplate. Turning the head is difficult. Therefore, in foot tournaments, many knights prefer an armet or closed helmet. With an armet or the so-called closed helmet, the neck is completely exposed and must be protected by an additional collar. While in the 15th century mainly chain colors were used, the helmets of the 16th and 17th century were mostly connected with rigid plate colors. The risk of injury with a chain color is quite high, so I attached additional plates under my chain color to protect my lyrex. Even these were unhistorical for the late Middle Ages. My closed helmets are based on the helmets of some historical fencing sources, shown here. The visor consists of breathing and side holes that are too narrow for blade tips. Armets, closed helmets and great basquinets have examples for perforated helmet visors. Nevertheless, many tournament helmets have narrow viewer slides, of which the edges were bent outwards to deflect most of the thrusts. In the context of modern martial art, I therefore advise against any wide viewing slides that can be pierced. Same for visors, they must to be fixable. 
On one of my helmets you can see a historical closure with a safety pin. In order to protect the head efficiently, strong padding is important. Especially for Buhurt sports, helmets are padded beyond the historical level to avoid concussions. However, the strong padding also has disadvantages. The more padding, the larger and heavier the helmet becomes. On one hand, this increases the load on the spine. On the other hand, the body center of gravity shifts upwards and lever in wrestling changes. In armored duels against only one opponent, the use of less padding is possible. Since I don't use extreme padding on my own helmets, I can clearly prove that powerful blows against the helmet can be effective, even with swords. So each helmet should have at least 1 to 2 centimeters of padding and made from hardened steel to more safely simulate harness fencing. I hope I was able to introduce you to a pair of safe medieval helmets for foot tournaments and forgive me for not having big respect for the salad. If you have a different opinion then feel free to drop it in the comments. Meanwhile, thanks to my patrons for your support.